Hello and welcome back to the She Invest podcast. I am your host, Allie Fugit. And I'm Carrie Douglas. And uh, we are She Invest. So uh, today we thought that we would kind of come and give you some real time updates on what we're currently going through uh, with our hotels and uh, just the process of uh, everything that we're having to go through, whether it's technology that we're doing or design or you know, real, just in the thick of things, because uh, it's a lot of good conversational points. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was really excited to just talk a little bit more and share with you, Allie, about like what we've decided to do in terms of our tech stack. Um, so that's what I've been working on this past week. Do um, you want me to just dive into that? Is that cool? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So I vetted a few property management systems this past week. Um, And I know that a lot of people coming from the short-term rental space are um, using like um, owner res or guesty or hospitable. And um, I decided since I'm starting from scratch where where I'm going to be building a new tech stack from the ground up for 30 units all at once that are all on one piece of property, um, I wanted to vet the hotel tech stack options. So I had a meeting with um, CloudBeds, I had a meeting with SiteMinder, and I had a meeting with Muse. And um, of those three, I've decided I'm gonna work with um, CloudBeds. I don't work for any of these people, I'm not getting paid by any of these people, by the way. Um, I'm just sharing kind of what my experience is. And I think like there was nothing bad about any of them. I think just for me, Cloudbed seems a little more comprehensive. Like it seemed like a one-stop shop for everything. And while it might not be quite as robust and might not go quite as deep in each of its features, it was, it, it did kind of um, encompass everything that I was looking for. Whereas like Muse and SiteMinder both went really deep. Like they are both very robust tools in their particular like niche of what they offer. Um, but I, but then you have to add on some other pieces in addition to, to be comprehensive, to get all the pieces that you need. So um, I don't feel like, I feel like if I had um, more than 30 units, like if I maybe had 50 or 60 or a hundred that, you know, going with those more robust tools that go more deep into that specific niche would have been, you know, more beneficial. And I would have added on a separate you know, booking engine and a separate channel manager and a separate PMS. And I would have just made sure they all talk to each other. Um, but for the purposes of this for 30 rooms and just kind of keeping it as, as broad as possible, um, CloudBed seemed like the best fit for me. So I made that decision this week. And then um, we have chosen. Can I, ask, can I ask a question oh. on that real quick? Please, please. Um, so just for like people out there that don't know. So um can you kind of explain the difference between like what SiteMinder offers and what Muse and CloudBeds sure. offer? Yeah. So CloudBeds has a PMS, a booking engine, a uh, channel manager. They have purchased Whistle recently, which is a guest communication platform. Um, so you can do, uh, you can integrate there are some lock integration features with that. It might be a little bit limited, so I might still need to add links um, or something to that effect, but I, I haven't explored that enough yet to know. Um, but Whistle has um, pre-programmed messaging via text. They have some AI integration, like where if the guest sends a text message that includes certain words, it can have an autoresponder um, that takes care of, of addressing that concern for the guest via text. And then it can also notify you like, hey, if the AI system wasn't able to come up with an answer within, you know, 20 seconds, it'll send me a a notification or my team a notification um, that I need to step in and manually handle the question. Um, It has um, the ability to take payments. So they have their own like white label, like it looks like it's your website that's taking the payments. Same thing with the direct booking engine. It looks like it's on your website. It's not taking you to like a third party platform to book. Um, so it seemed really, it seemed like real, like it had kind of everything that I was looking for. Um, and they do have their own price intelligence tool that I might add on, but they will also be integrating with price labs in the future. The difference then is that, um, Muse is really just a PMS that can take 
payments. And apparently they handle chargebacks for you, which I thought was really neat. Um, huge value yeah. proposition there. I know for some people, um, they have a guest portal. Um, they can do like add on purchasing through that guest portal. Um, like if you want to charge for late checkout or wine or whatever you want to charge for, um, their, their property management system though, is so robust. Um, they can do like maintenance requests and like tasks or tickets, um, reservation overview, the timeline, it's a drag and drop and cancellation. They, you can do like rentable spaces. So if you have a clubhouse or a common space that someone wants to rent out, you can actually put that on there as like a rentable space. Um, you can have customer profiles. So like really the, the CRM piece of um, like labeling and tagging your customers to try to, you know, continue to market them in the future. Um, really, really neat. If you were like running a true hotel that had more rooms, like a really great PMS, but they do not have a booking engine or a channel manager integrated. So you would need to get that from another party. And so that was what I was trying to possibly get from SiteMinder if I had wanted to work with Muse. And so then SiteMinder would have been like this additional company that I need to have an account with and an interaction with and additional charges. I think the bottom line would have been very similar, like the cost would have been similar, but it's just more pieces for me to manage. And mm -hmm. um, the SiteMinder booking engine um, for direct bookings seemed really great. Um, the channel manager is exceptional and they have some specific like Google insights, although cloud beds does allow you to be listed on Google hotels. Um, there's a specific like insights and metrics piece that comes from site miner. That's kind of neat to have. Um, but it's just, uh, it, it was just too many pieces for me to try to manage at the scale that I'm at right now. If I had more units in my, in my property, or if I was doing multiple hotels, I would probably have considered the Muse SiteMinder combo. Yeah. And you know, I think that's important though, like when you are making decisions, like what you talked about is the more systems you add, the more interfaces you add, <laughs> like as you are building a team around this hotel, right? It just adds more complexity to it. And like yeah. the name of the game is like keeping it simple. And so the less that we have to learn and teach these people, the better off we're going to be. Yeah, fewer um, logins to like few, fewer systems to have to log into to look at things was definitely what I was kind of thinking about. And and that's why like I loved my presentation that I had with links. I thought they were fantastic. Um, I was very pleased and they integrated with all the, the options that I was mm -hmm. considering. Um, but there is a potential to use through CloudBeds. There is some um, lock integration. And so I, I will continue to explore that. And maybe on a future update, I can share what I find. But if, if the, if there's something through cloud beds and whistle that, that integrates, and I just have one less system that my staff has to log into, I might consider it, um, even if it's slightly less robust. So, um, but that's just me and my personal, like, motivations and and my personal value proposition right like why am i interested in this software um there are some people who might be you know trying to run a true motel that has a ballroom and they really want to focus on weddings and bookable spaces and um more reporting features then muse would probably be a great option so i i really i loved them both i thought they were fantastic um, and again, the pricing would have been very similar. So it wasn't about price. It was just about like, what do I really need right now? So, and yeah, all the yeah, not reps who I worked with were fantastic. They were so helpful. Yeah. And I think it's good that you did like thorough research because like not just jumping on the, you know, the wagon with everybody else, like, because like for us, um, like when we, when we did research on like what we were going to use for our hotel, it, it very much came back to again like how many softwares do we want to use because mm -hmm. for a hotel like obviously cloud beds or muse is like definitely more geared to that right uh they're more geared towards that multi-family space essentially mm -hmm. um but for us like we have a larger portfolio of co-hosted properties so it was do we do multiple PMS platforms and channel managers or can we just stick to like, is there one that can be all encompassing? 
um, which is yeah. at the time why we went with Guesty. But, um, you know, who's to say in the future, like we don't, we don't switch, but I think it was just for simplicity and, and the current state that we're in um, for making sure that our teams, it, it's fluid, right? And it's, right. we are used to it and easy and it's something that's teachable for us. So, but yeah. I'm glad that you're doing it now because that's like super important before you get into the thick of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you brought up a really good point. Uh, number one, that like, if you have a larger STR portfolio, and you're already managing those units, like having a separate PMS for the boutique hotel would have been annoying, right? But for me, this is, it's really starting from the ground up with this property right now. Um, because, you know, we've decided to sell our, our other one that we have. So um, for us, like, it just made more sense to start from scratch. But I would say like for anyone who's kind of leaning into the boutique hotel space and that's the direction you want to go, like these are important conversations, you know, to have. Um, and then you brought up another good point to Allie about just doing the work on the front end. Like I didn't want to start with one PMS and then wonder if the grass was greener somewhere else when I when I get frustrated, like if, if I come upon an issue and I'm like, what, you know, I didn't want to be asking myself, Oh, should I switch? You know, like I wanted to kind of have all the information ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's good. Good to do your due diligence for that. Yeah. So uh, what else did you get on this week? Um, the other thing I did was I set up, uh, I got the internet installed. I, um, received my stay five. We're using stay five. Um, ubiquity unify i feel like they're all all these words are like interchangeable so there's a, the company is unify and they make a ubiquity um, access point we picked the long range we're going to put at least six of them across the three acre property i'm not sure how many we'll end up needing but it, it'll probably be at least six because we're it's such a large you know piece of part piece of property with rooms spread out across it um and then we ordered them through a company called stayfi which has pre-programmed some software on the internet access point so that when my guests connect to the Wi-Fi, they'll land on what's called a splash page. And it'll say like, hey, welcome to our boutique hotel's Wi-Fi. Please just put in your email um, and then check this box if you're okay with us sending you an occasional coupon, but not blowing up your inbox. Um, so that is uh, in the works. We haven't installed the access points, but the internet is set up. Um, I've also got a the phone number that already existed on the property i'm um, going to be forwarding to a cell phone um and we will get our we also got our own brand new phone number but there are some people who you know had the old number saved that we're still using it so i don't want to miss out on those guests um the big the big conversation that's taken place over the last week about phones in the boutique hotel conversations i've been a part of is like how many phone calls you're going to get so I remember um, one of the guys we were chatting with said, hey, it's it's real. Like you're going to have so many more phone calls instead of online bookings. And um, so I just want to make sure we're prepared for that. So I'm working on that this week. Um, awesome. Yeah. So you thinking about like going with like something like Ring Central to do that with or are you just going to just do some call forwarding for now? Um, I'm going to do the call forwarding until I get um, everything synced up with like the Airbnb account, et cetera, because, um, there are some systems that won't allow you to use a voice over IP number. Mm -hmm. um, so once I have all those systems established, then I'll switch it to a voice over IP number. Um, the internet company allowed me to bundle cell phone for free for the first year. Like they did, I think they're just trying to get mobile customers. Nice. They're trying to get cell phone customers. And so they were like, yeah, if, if you set this up with your internet, it's free for the first year. I was like, okay. So, um, so I figure once that year comes up, then I'll switch it over to a voice over IP after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on that part? And then I could, otherwise there's more that I did this week that I'll tell you too. Yeah, no. Um, I think, I think that's great. No, I, I mean, so the calls are going to be outrageous, right? Like when we went back and pulled the data from the hotel that we bought, the calls are insane on top of, like you just said, like the conversations that we've been a part of this week. Um, mm -hmm. I guess when you buy something like this, like coming from like just the regular short-term rental world, you don't think about calls being a thing, right? Because we message everybody. Yeah. But, um, but 
But then you put yourself in that situation. When I go somewhere, if I am staying at a hotel and I want to know about something, I call them. Yeah. Like, so I, you know, just like getting in that right mental space for that. But I think you're on the right track. And I'm, uh, that, that piece is, I'm, that's a smart move for you. Like a little, you know, again, no bill for the cell phone call for there and let it rot until you're ready to connect everything. So mm -hmm. good move. Yeah. Because then I can connect, um, like, and I, and I think cloud beds will have some things connected as well. So I'm not sure how it's all going to work, but if I need to have like a legit cell phone number to connect to Airbnb, I want to have that available. So mm -hmm. that'll get me, like I said, through the first year. So, um, yeah. so then also this week, um, I reached out to the wallpaper people. Um, so <laughs> we're going to segue from tech over to, um, you know, design and build out. But I, um, I talked with them a little bit. They sent me some ideas from their catalog that they thought might work for my space, but I think we're going to end up tweaking something that's already in their catalog, which is really cool that they allow you to kind of do something custom. I, I've yeah. liked working with them so far. You had a great experience too, right? Can you share? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so the, um, I do want to like, just let everybody know what it is. It's called the wallpaper store. And um, they're out of Miami, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Miami, Florida. Um, amazing. My rep is Fanny. I think that's who Carrie is working with as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, super customizable. Like literally, um, I just sent them what I'm looking for and the vibe with kind of the mood board. And they came back with like spot on wallpapers, beautiful, beautiful wallpapers. But then they also have like, a contract with Shutterstock and you can search and pull up any image on there. I mean, there's thousands of images on there. So if you can't find something to meet your needs, then it's like, it's kind of impossible. Right. But, um, but yeah, I actually, the design that I went with was one that they had already had previously and it was in their catalog and they were able to go in and customize it to add IR hotel is the mallard. Um, and so the mallard is a type of duck, right? And so they were able to add mallard ducks into the wallpaper. And it and turned so out it so cute. cute. It, I love yours. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the the website for this company is www.wallpaperstoremiami.com. And the email that I've been communicating through is wallpaperstoremiami at gmail.com. And Fanny is her name. So I did the same thing you did. I just said like, here's here's the aesthetic that we're going for and i described it in words so i didn't even show her like a mood board or anything i think she wants me to send that but i was trying to see what they came back with on their own like i didn't want to yeah. like pigeonhole them into what i had in mind because a lot of times if you let other creative people be creative they'll come up with something really great that maybe i hadn't thought of so i purposely just said here's our logo here's the vibe of our property um, here's kind of what we're looking for. And then they came back to me with a few, you know, options. And then I'll say, okay, I kind of like these, how can we customize these to make them a little bit different and work for us? Um, so that's been a really fun conversation to start having. I've been enjoying and talking to them. Yeah. And it's fun to start getting into the design aspects because that's like, that's not what I've been working on, but I will say about the wallpaper. What's really cool is that they, they make the wallpaper, it's customized to fit your wall. So you send them the dimensions of the wall that you're wallpapering. And when the wallpaper comes to you, it is already cut to that specific wall dimensions. And they're cut into strips and they're labeled. And so it's like, this is strip one, two, three, four, five. And so like- That's amazing. Like, like, <laughs> yes, yes, I just got, I, lit, like, I, I wish I had a picture to show you guys. Um, I just got all of the boxes in for the hotel and I had them delivered to my home. So I of course could like check them and everything. And we are still having like a lot of construction going on up there, but we're about to start installing wallpaper and how much of a breeze it's going to be because every box is one room and it's like, it literally has them labeled. And I was like, this is fantastic. Um, I don't know if any of you have worked with crews before, but sometimes, even though you think you explain it the best way possible, uh, sometimes things just don't happen right. So for it to be like 
instructions with the box that have the picture of the wall with the numbers and it's like this is what you do it's just phenomenal and again you can't beat the designs they come up with yeah right so do you i don't even know does it does it need glue applied or is it like self-adhesive do you know i think that um it's just like kind of like the old-fashioned wallpaper so um you would just run it through water and so it does have the adhesive on it so you run it through water and put it's it up got and it on the back after you run through water okay okay cool yeah 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 um Very exciting yeah um, so I, i'm super excited yeah i saw i did see the picture kyle posted of your boxes that had come in and that looks yes. like a lot <laughs> but it's gonna yeah, be so cool. it is it is. We still have, we have one more shipment coming in, so more boxes to come. Yeah, yeah. So we um we did finalize our logo, um, and I'm going to order a coming soon banner, and I'm going to make it like really big and put it across the front of one of the buildings, um, just to kind of let the community know like what's what's coming because I don't know about you, but like when we drive through a town and there's something under construction, we always read the fence, like what's going to be going in here. Like we want to know. Um, mm -hmm. and so I think that'll be a really great way to just create buzz and conversation around the community. And I know, um, we heard, uh, Mike Shogren mentioned that he was having, um, he's got a, a construction fence that's going to go up across the front of his and he's actually doing a giant banner that is the rendering of what the exterior of the building is going to look like. So when you drive past the fence, you're going to be looking at a banner that is a picture of what the completed project will look like. I'm not going quite to that extent, but that sounded really cool. Like what a neat yeah. idea. That and is really cool. I bet like that. We, so we have it, but we're actually working on um, what, like part of what we've been working on this week is working with getting some quotes out from some different companies for the sign that will go up. So our idea is to go ahead and replace that sign. So uh, essentially the same thing, right? So that people will know that it's that it is new. But um, something that we're actually kind of working on the background in right now um, is that we are going to have a massive like block party for a grand opening. Yeah. So because we are actually partnering with a lot of businesses in the area. So um, we have a friend that's a DJ that's already blocked the dates for like our perspective opening weekend. And we're just going to throw a massive party and um, we're going to have some friends and family come and stay to give us some feedback on everything. And we are going to just literally have a parking lot, grill out, give away food, let people look at the rooms and and go from there because I think again, like our community is having like a big gentrification. So we're not doing like the banner thing, but we are creating buzz by partnering with vendors and again, like the signage. But and I did not realize, I don't know if you've quoted them, but signs are stupid expensive. I um, saw your quote. That was stupid. <laughs> 20, I'm not yeah, saying yeah, you shouldn't yeah. do it because you have to do it, but like yeah. $24,000 is, um, so we just have like, currently it, it's a terrible sign, but, um, it's a very odd shaped sign with the logo up there. So our idea is to knock that off and get a rectangular sign with our logo, the mallard on there. And it's going to cost $24,000 to do it. And so now we're trying to figure out how we can outsource some of these things to save money. And I think that we may have, um, we may have, found a piece yesterday that can save us about fifteen thousand dollars so um which well, is a massive chunk and i noticed that part of yours was labor like almost half yes twelve thousand yeah yes um and so, so and we're finding that for those of you going through this that kind of stuff and you're like looking for contractors um i will uh, throw this out there just so you have this um, specifically in our area, the way that they're quoting jobs is like they double whatever it's going to be in materials. So it's like $12,000 in materials is going to be $12,000 in labor. Yeah. So, um, if you're going through and like you are, you have a hotel or any other deal and like you have to have big jobs like this done, that was, that is kind of like our new rule of thumb to like project the estimated cost of things is literally say, okay, this is the material. If we're contracting it out, we're going to double the price. Um, yeah. so that, you know, 
Um, but so ballpark, just a that's, meeting classes, that's that's a perfect way to do it. Um, yeah, I I'm excited to um, actually in two weeks after this, we will have um, my contractor on our podcast. And she will probably have some insight and some things to say about that. So I'm excited to, to get her take on that. Um, for our sign, I know yours is like a, yours has like the tube lights inside and then you put the two panels on the exterior. Right. And I think yes. that's why it's probably so expensive. Ours is just a monument sign. Um, part of it's stone, which we won't be touching, and then part of it's wood, which we will replace with our new logo. Um, but that wood piece will probably be less expensive than doing those panels that go on, on the light. And then we have external lights that shine onto this uh, wood piece. So um, that will probably, I'll, I'll be excited to share with you what it ends up costing me in the end. I'm not quite to that point of having that quoted yet, but um, just yeah one of those things that like when you're talking about renovating rooms you don't always think about some of those yeah things, right no absolutely absolutely we um same so uh some other things that we've been working on this past week are um design wise like it's time for us like to do tile and everything or i mean tile can kind of wait um especially for bathrooms right um and we have been pushing it off because it, the pricing um we just wanted to get it better and so we have went through, I think this is probably the eighth time that we've had it quoted from different companies um, locally and just anybody that we knew of big companies too. Like we were just trying to go through anything. So um, my husband was actually able to make a connection with someone um, through someone that works for us um, just from a previous employment. And we were able to save $40,000 on flooring and tile this that's week. incredible that's a lot yeah <laughs> a huge yeah saving. i mean yeah yeah absolutely so um forty thousand dollars is is amazing and then we learned um some great learning pieces from that where we learned about different uh flooring options for um hotels versus regular homes and like what they offer and uh all of that so uh so some great conversations and again great um, knowledge came out of that that we now can have for our next project as well um, as well as a new relationship with somebody that can we know can save us money because yeah um, we were going with someone for flooring um, that we've used on 10 different houses and uh, this guy beat his quote by twelve thousand dollars so um, That's I mean amazing. you can't you yeah. just I mean, you have to make a good business move at that point, right? Mm -hmm. To uh, for that. So that that's been going on for us. Um, again, they are they are finishing up um, move like again cleaning out some of the rooms for dust and everything because wallpaper is about to go in. And then um, I just did links, so I will back carry up on links. Um, presentation is great. Interface is nice. Um, I am working on getting our cabins online first um, as we are still replacing doors at the hotel. So this is my test run to get all the kinks out before the hotel. Goes yeah. Out. So you'll test out the link system on the cabins first to see how you like it. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. And um, I think give my team enough time to really familiarize so that when we do have 40 locks going on at one time, mm -hmm. um, it's much easier. So, yeah. uh, so yeah, so we've got that going on and um, yeah, my other piece I'm going on is now I'm getting in the nitty gritty for ordering items and we're using Minoan. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of torn on some things like we, Carrie and I are having a conversation with another friend yesterday, uh, Cam Snyder, who was actually on a podcast recently and um, she used host GPO and I, I, I'm interested to see what the differences are between host GPO and Minoan. Um, however, I'm kind of thick and deep into the process of Minoan, but I think also um, for the vibe for the hotel that we're going for, I think that Minoan makes sense because we're wanting to offer that experience. Yeah. So, um, so I think that I'm just going to like, I think I'm just going to go with them, but I would be interested to the next time. Um, I would be interested the next time to, uh, you know, possibly do host GPO. I'm sorry, guys. My dog is 
trying to. No uh, problem. Sorry. Well, and I think our, the clean, big, our cleaning team's here, so <laughs> no problem. I think the big thing that you know that has me torn is that um, for the particular furniture line that I might be looking at, I think the discounts are going to be better with host GPO, but there's no mm-hmm. opportunity to monetize that if a guest wants to um, purchase. Yeah product going forward. That's the cool thing for those that don't know about Minoan. Um, they, once you order product from them, it gets stored in a database and then they create like an online store for your, uh, STR or boutique hotel to basically be a showroom for purchasing those, um, furniture pieces. And so someone can scan a QR code while they're staying with you and purchase something and you get a percentage of the sales because you've basically been the, the furniture showroom for um, for that furniture company. So it's really a neat opportunity. And so I love Minoan for that reason. I just need to kind of weigh the, you know, the pros and cons of like, okay, the discounts are more significant somewhere else, but maybe, maybe monetizing the sales will, will outweigh that in the long term. I don't know. Um, so something yeah. to think about for sure, but yeah, I'm excited yeah. to, to see how that goes for you guys. I know that, um, Cam had mentioned that she struggled with some of the logistics and coordination with furniture delivery, but that was not, um, host GPO's fault. Right. That was the, <laughs> the actual furniture company that they were, that they were purchasing. Yep. So, um, so that doesn't have me as, as scared as, um, you know, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Like we'll figure out the logistics, but, um, right. Yeah. And I think like for, for me, I, I, again, like you said, I love the offering that experience where people can like shop the room, shop the look. And then additionally, um, what I've liked is Minoan's kind of been able to take some things off my plate by sourcing with those particular vendors to make sure things are in stock and what their lead times are and everything. So, um, as, as we're going through this, cause like, you know, as you're raising money and like you're going through, um, uh, you know, when you have to choose the avenue in which that money needs to be dispersed, dispersed, um, you know, appropriately in the times that it has to be dispersed, you have to make like, you know, specific decisions on what you're going to do. So we've been, they've been really great about our timelines and, and when things need to be ordered and um, like working with us to like really uh, segregate um into different like you know sections and categories on things that need to go first things that need to go second um based on lead times availability and all that so it's been really nice to yeah that's to really good I, and i think you bring up a good point like if you have a bank of x number of dollars to deploy for furnishings and you don't want to order everything at the same time you're you're going to need to order the things that have a longer lead time first right and then mm-hmm. i mean where are you guys storing everything when it comes? I was planning to get like a, um, a, a movable um, storage trailer, like a pod or something similar, and just have it parked in the parking lot and put everything in there until everything arrives before we would start trying to do the build out. What are your, what are you guys thinking? Like literally it's going to have to be the same thing. And so per, like currently things that have come in, um, we do have extra rooms that are like cleared out. Um, but we know they're going to be like last on the list to finish. So like we're currently storing things there and so we can move them, but yeah, it's going to have to be the same thing because we just don't have the storage availability on site right now. Um, so, but currently they're all just in one big room. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but what, well, and, but again, it's, what's really nice though, is as we get into the bigger furniture, if uh, again, we can do it at the right time, then our, um, the teams with Minoan will deliver it and deliver it to the rooms. Oh, that's awesome. So, okay. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So we're trying to wait on some of the bigger items so that they'll, they'll be able to take it right to the room, put it where we need it and go on. That'll be good. That'll be good. Um, well, I don't think I have anything else. Is there anything else you want to share that you've been doing this week? Um, nope, that's it. We're, we are rocking and rolling, but yeah, we're glad to be able to come and give you guys an update of what we have going on in real time. And then, um, we'll do this soon again, um, just to keep everybody updated on our projects. Yeah, absolutely. And so next week we have, um, another boutique hotel operator 
um, who's had her uh, boutique hotel live, I think for almost six months now. Um, she's going to be coming on next week to share her story. And she seems like an amazing person. Um, we just met this past week um, through our mastermind, but she was so much fun to talk with on the phone yesterday. And I can't wait to have her on next week. And then the following week um, is my contractor. So she's going to, I'm sure, have a lot to share um, from a little bit different perspective, right? Because we're all coming from this uh, perspective as being like the um, the founder, the operator, the owner, the investor, and she's coming in from like, oh gosh, I'm I'm the one who has to wrangle you girls, right? Like, <laughs> so um, yeah. so she should she should be a really fun guest to have. So anyway, um, awesome. thank you all for joining us today. Yep, yep. Thanks, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.